What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Wednesday, July 29th, 2020. I'm one of your hosts alongside, you know him, as the host of Animal Cro- uh, Animal Talking, the Animal Crossing talk show. You know him as one of the hosts of the Kind of Funny X-Cast. You know him as the rogue one, at Gary Witta. I'm known as many things, Greg. Uh, you're returning. Only, you're only some of which can go out on a family-friendly stream. Exactly. Yeah. Why? Well, that's the thing. You like to, you know, you, you like to keep them guessing. You know, you're like a Pee Wee Herman. You can play to the kids if you want to, but you can get dirty if you need to. Just right when you think I'm gonna zig, I zag. Exactly. You never know. You never know what I'm gonna do that's next. A, that's a good reference that we want to go. With. <laughs> <laughs> but Pee Wee Herman, he worked dark on top of the whole masturbation thing, which obviously no, a I different know. time in the '90s, a different time. Who nowadays? Who would care? Nobody would care. I'm glad to be back with you again, Greg. It's always a highlight in my week, hanging out and talking. It's been about too long. I was worried I lost you. Yeah, right. Forever. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're over there with Bike Mike now, palling around with Alana. Hanging out with Alana and Mike, my my fancy new friends. We're having a great time over there. The uh, podcast seems to be uh, very popular so far. Well received, for sure. Responding yeah. well to it, so I'm thrilled. Yeah. But, Here's the question: but, you know, Are you enjoying like, it? Are you enjoying doing the kind of funny X cast? Oh yeah. Look, I mean, ever since I first, you know, gave you grief, you know, because if you remember, this whole thing was born out of me giving you grief live mm-hmm. on this very show when I said, "Hey, you know, P.S. I love you. It's all very well and good, but what about us?" Um, xbox fans as well like yeah. where's the equivalent version of that show and uh, the squeaky wheel apparently gets the grease it took a while but now we're on the air with our very own uh xbox uh, dedicated youtube show and podcast alana's terrific mike is great as you know i love him yeah i uh, love them both and so to be able to just you know for me this is you know just hanging out with my pals talking about video games you know it beats working for a living how, yeah uh, how is barrett when compared to me yeah, Would you prefer Barrett, as a, Barrett you know, the be running this show right now for you? I, I mean, I feel like you're just trying, trying to start some shit, Kevin. I just want to find Which is out fine. where... I, mean, I love that. I mean, where, you know me, I love shit stirring. I just want to find out where I fit in your, your like, this chart the hierarchy yeah the hierarchy, there you go yeah. there you well, let go, me hierarchy. let me let me let me let me tell you let, let me let me let me ask answer your question with a question kevin okay out of you and barrett which one have i invited to be our guest on animal talking thank you so much yeah, and oh, and by the way, how did you respond to that uh, invite? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> how did he respond, Gary? Let me tell you something. I I I, I I've had big celebrities come on the show. Very you have few Brie people. Larson. Brie Larson. Very was few people show. have turned us down. Kevin is one of them. Now I didn't turn you down, did I? Or was I like? Well, oh, I, man. I, I, are you are you booked on the show? Oof. I, you know, it's a busy schedule. I got a lot going on, Gary. Yeah, I, I'm sure that saying. you guys will have me on saying, at some Greg. point. Wow, I'll, you, you hate know, to see it. You hate I do. To see I do. It. I do, do want to get all of the all the kind of funny people uh, on the show at some point. We've had you, Greg. We've had Joey. Yeah. yeah. Um, Kevin was supposed to be next, but he basically spat. I offered him a hand of friendship. Wow. He spat in it. You hate uh, to see so it. We'll move on to the. We'll move on to the next person. In a we'll lot of Nick circles, or spitting or in, in the cool hand, Greg or what? In a handshake is is like that's how you make a stronger bond. Spit. Is brothers. it a spit yeah. handshake? Yeah. All, right. I don't think I'm well, I'm not, I'm, all I'm bond. saying is I'm not feeling the stronger bond right now. Wow. Look at that, Kevin. Wow. I you, see you how it could be opposite. misunderstood in these Corona times, but uh, <laughs> it was a gesture of kindness. All right. Let's just let, get let, out of this. This is awkward. Yeah, I don't let's move be on because this is just doing. awkward now. Yeah, I'm Thank starting to feel bad. God, you're me. here. No, no, of course. Yes. Thank God you're here, Gary, because today it is an Xbox rock block of news. We're talking Ooh, about good. a possible August event. We're talking about Fable's killer team, and we're talking about what a success Grounded already is because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show at patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. You can go there, ask us questions, give us concerns. Of course, you can be part of the squad up, but more importantly, you can get Kind of Funny Games Daily ad-free. You can get it with the exclusive post show we do and you can just support the train that is kind of funny at patreon.com slash kind of funny games however if you have no bucks to toss our way it's no big deal you can go to youtube.com slash kind of funny games roosterteeth.com and podcast services around the globe each and every weekday to get a brand spanking new episode that doesn't have the post show does have ads but still gets you the news news 
housekeeping for you. Uh, we just, if you're watching live, and maybe if you just noticed that the show went up a little bit later, we're about 30 minutes behind schedule today because we just did our reactions to the Avengers War Table number two that ran through all the beta information. It announced Hawkeye as the DLC character after uh, the game is launched, the post-launch content, and really ran through a whole bunch of stuff. We were all really impressed. A lot of content in there, a lot of cool stuff happening. You can catch those reactions over on YouTube.com slash kind of funny games, or if you want to go in the Twitch archive, they might still be up there. But more importantly, YouTube.com slash kind of funny games. Give us the view. Uh, also worth pointing out, we are close to it. It is almost time for Major Nelson's Kind of Funny Weekend. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Larry himself oh, from Xbox is joining us uh, Thursday. That's tomorrow. He'll be doing We Have Cool Friends with me. Friday, he'll be co-hosting Kind of Funny Games daily with me. And then Saturday, Major Nelson joins Snowbike Mike and Alana Pierce for the Kind of Funny X cast. Gary, we couldn't put you on that with him. You know what I mean? You, you get in there. It's just too much. It'd be too much. You'd overload each other. What 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 can I what can I tell you, Greg? There's only there's only so much room for you know. I I I I don't want to you know um, overshadow anyone. You know, sure. anywhere exactly. I go, exactly. That's the thing. Any, That's anywhere the thing. I go, I steal the spotlight. I think you know. Ma I appreciate Major Nelson, that. Um, I think it's his time to shine. It's that thing where Major Nelson, you know, he's a young up and comer. He hasn't been in front of the camera, the microphone too much. He gets in there with a big celebrity like you. He's gonna freeze yeah, up. We all, yeah, we all, we all know how camera shy Larry is. You know, it's, I'm amazed <laughs> he got him at all. I'm amazed he got him. Great. What a, what a get. Uh, of course, you can catch all that for the most part, with the exception of the Xcast live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games or later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games or podcast services around the globe. Thank you to our Patreon producers, Mohammed Mohammed, aka Momo, Blackjack. And today we're brought to you by Brooklyn, but I'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. I've not seen any news this morning, so this is all going to be coming. This is going to be coming at me fresh. I have no idea what's going on in the world. Like I said, we have this is a rarity, and I appreciate it. I love it. I'm loving post Xbox showcase because out of six stories, four of them are Xbox focused. So you're right where you need to be. All right. I love it. I love it. Number one, are we in the green zone? The green zone. The green zone. Number one, that's always what in, in like a movie. That's a good. That's that's all in like army's like in a good spot, right? That's like yeah. hey, that could that, we could we could have called that could have been the name. I I, I think KFX X cast is the best, but Green Zone could have been a good name for an Xbox. We could have shortened it to well. G Spot too. Would have been great. The G Spot. Uh, oh my god. Uh, all right. That you know that was a thing for a while. MTV actually had a gaming brand that was the G Spot. Oh wow. Okay. That's where I met Blair Herder for the first time. Uh, right. Number one. Xbox might be having an event in August. This is Joseph Patrick over at International Business Times. Microsoft is expected to lift the covers on the Xbox Series X this August, although there are folks who are looking at something more. Uh, Microsoft Executive Vice President for Gaming, Phil Spencer, may have raised things a bit when he spoke on a podcast. Spencer spoke on the I Justine Same Brain podcast and touched on work that they are doing on backwards compatibility uh, for the Xbox Series X. It is a feature that gamers have been looking for, particularly for the ones who still have old games to play. However, it appears that most felt there was something more coming this August. Anyways, quote, I'm encouraged to be able to talk. Uh, I'm encouraged to be able to talk more about it should be August. I think August will have more to say on that. Spencer said, of course, speaking more about the August event hints that Spencer was purely focusing on the Xbox Series X. But for some, it raises expectations on the possible announcement of the Xbox Series S or Xbox Lockhart. For those who may be uh, encountering the Xbox Series S for the first time, this is, to, this is believed to be the cost-friendly game console that would perform a tad lower than the Xbox Series X, IGN reported. Most are, trying backwards, most are tying the backwards compatibility discussion to the lower price unit. It does make sense considering the Xbox Series S could potentially accommodate older games that have lower requirements. Uh, just recently, images of the white Xbox Series X controller made the rounds. Along with the buzz uh, came the possible coming of the Xbox Lockhart that most perceive, uh, perceive uh, will also be revealed next month. Eurogamer reported that the Xbox Series S was originally set to come out in June uh, through an E3 showcase. But with that failure to push through, uh, there is now growing belief that the more affordable Xbox Lockhart may be revealed in August, a reason why most are now tying it to Phil Spencer's latest comments. Gary, I think it was a foregone conclusion we'd have another Xbox event. I think they've teased that before. They said they'd talk to us more this year. Do you think August is the right time? Do you think it's that one-two punch of following right back up with it? I mean, I'm not a marketing expert. I can't tell you if if that's the right time to do it. I mean, there obviously still is more 
uh, to talk about. Not really a terrible amount at this point, right? We've got, we've got. A, I mean, who knows? Again, who Just knows? The big who stuff, knows right? Like, Phil how Spencer's much does this thing cost, and his, when does it come out, Gary? Who knows what Phil Spencer's got up his wizard's sleeves? Of course, we just don't yeah, yeah. know. Um, you know, at this point, we got a pretty good handle on the hardware specs. We know what the hardware looks like. There's not a lot of mystery left surrounding the hardware. We've got a good sense of the games now. Uh, we don't exactly know what all the launch titles will, will be, but you know that the showcase that they did, um, you know, gave us a good sense of what the games are going to look like and what their immediate plans are. Um, and I guess all that's really left in terms of like immediate hardcore information is a release date and a price those are the two yeah. things that people are really keen to know and, and and then yes the 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 remaining great unknown is this other skew this series s there's a there's, do you believe we, in the series s yes absolutely 100% i yes absolutely i would i would i would i would bet any money on it yes there it's for me it's not a matter of speculation there is a series s and and it's coming how um, radical do you think it is cuz this was the question we had and a, a discussion we've had before on the show, not you and I, but me and someone else, probably bless. But it was this idea that when originally Anaconda and Lockhart got leaked and started getting talked about, for me, it was that Anaconda, now the Series X, was going to be this giant behemoth, you know, cost a couple hundred dollars, obviously, be the high end system you'd get. But Lockhart would be this streaming box, maybe a hundred bucks. You put it in, you can get all the stuff, you can, you know, download your games, some games to a very small amount of them. You'd be able to stream Game Pass, et cetera, et cetera, and so on. Now that we are so close to xCloud, I think xCloud eliminates the need for the box I was talking about. Like, you don't even need the $100 box, right? Because you have a phone, you have a computer. They may not be the best, but if they can stream to xCloud and be there, then you have your, guess what? For $15, you're in the Xbox ecosystem. You are you have Ultimate, you have all the Game Pass games, and you're ready to go. Uh, so then it makes me think for this Series S, what are we really talking about? Obviously, you know, there's been so much uh, hullabaloo about them uh, ending manufacturing on some of the Xbox One SKUs. Uh, you figure that just is what's going to step into that spot. Yeah, I look, I, 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 this is all above my pay grade. All, you know, I can sit here and speculate, but I have no mm -hmm. idea what they're really planning to do. And I don't yet fully understand the strategy. Maybe it will come more into focus when they reveal more. It's entirely possible that, as you, as you just touched upon, Greg, that the Series S or whatever this lower priced SKU is going to be called um, is going to be is, is going to be something more interesting than just okay less power but it's cheaper right I mean that's yeah. that's kind of boring um, they might they might have a really aggressive way um, to to market and promote like it might it might have a really interesting angle that we don't yet fully have a have a of handle course. on um, yeah look the Series X is going to be expensive you know it's probably not going to be less than five uh, five hundred bucks is my is my guess. Uh, and you know they got walloped on price. You know they, as I've said many times, they got killed uh, in the last generation because Sony had that, that one hundred dollar price advantage. Because the, yeah, the Connect. Oh my God, don't even get me started. Um, I listen to the Xcast. I've heard you get started. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, you know, I, I get, I get the idea of like, yeah, like if that if the barrier of the price barrier of entry is too high, we have a lower price option for you. Um, and, and so I understand that on a basic level, but I think there might be something more interesting uh, going on than like if they if they could do it like hyper hyper aggressive as a way, uh, you know, price wise to get you into the Game Pass, you know, Xbox ecosystem, there could be something interesting there. I think we have to wait and see to see what they really do yeah. um, have up their sleeves. I'm I'm just saying like I think I I think that we have to uh, make allowances um, for the possibility that there might there might be something more interesting and radical at play here than just lower specs lower price right because that's Hopefully. that's obvious like i think i think I, I think they might be uh angling towards something more 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 you know out of left field than that i don't know what do you think i think i don't think i i want it to be radical i want it to be different i think you know xbox has made so many pro consumer uh impressive strides here and i think coming off the showcase uh and talking about all these games are on xbox game pass you can get xbox game pass right now for a buck and you can only you know you have this unlimited library of you know for 15 dollars a month beyond that uh i think all that's so great that you want people in there but i don't i i struggle i guess i i guess it's just about simplifying the model right where you've already started to wind down the other xbox uh ones right with the exception of that the sad edition, right? That's still happening, or maybe kind of funny.com slash you're wrong. I'm pretty sure that's the one that's still going, but keep, I'm always lost. The sad uh, edition. <laughs> when you, well, you know what I mean. <laughs> no, but when, I mean that's what it goes. I mean they walk right into that one. Greg, Xbox One, that's all digital, yeah. right? That's what. Yeah. That's what uh, but I think 
you want it to be as simple as possible, but you also, I, I know there is a, a, a consumer term for this uh, that I would like people to help me with, where there's that idea of having the lesser model there for $150 cheaper gets you to the store with the idea of buying that. But then you look at it behind the glass and you go, well, the, the really nice one's only $150 more. Why not make that jump? Why not go do that? Well, because a lot of people, $150 isn't only. That's a lot of money for a lot of people. Oh, I know. Oh, don't. I'm not at all trying to say I don't. Don't try to fucking paint me in that corner like you always do. <laughs> I understand the value of money, but there is an actual economics consumer term of like you have the lower thing, but it's still within. Like I think it might be $99 is within that grasp of like, well, why not treat ourselves? Why not do this? Uh, the Xbox One S is the one that's staying. I'm. I was. I put too much in. Right. Right. Uh, so I and think, I, yeah. and I, I'm, I'm just I'm just suggesting there's a version of this where and I don't think this is really it, but just just for shits and giggles. What if the, what if this was a really bare bones minimum hardware streaming box that was focused on X cloud uh, streaming and there's very little actual, you know, hardware inside the box. It's more yeah. of a of a streaming box, and they and they could get that out there really cheaply but i don't think um, they need to anymore dude like i think the the i think when in september when they flip that switch and they're like xcloud's here and it works with a, xbox game pass ultimate like that's the coming out party where if you care about that kind of thing that like th that's the the sampling i th i think their future is of the three SKUs where they have I, series x series s and then at the very i mean, literally you already have a controller from your old xbox one you already have an internet connection and a phone there you have xbox for 15 bucks i just don't want i you know i think microsoft sony at least has the benefit of a very simple offering right here's the playstation you know one two sure. three four five we had the PlayStation 2, now the 3, now the 4, now the 5. They have a nice logical naming scheme. Everyone gets it. Microsoft's naming schemes have always been all over the place. And I don't think it helps them, frankly, in terms of, uh, you know, consumer clarity. Um, you, know, you know, Xbox. Xbox 360. We had to go to 3 because, you know, we couldn't be, you know, we, we didn't want to be behind the PlayStation 3 by having an Xbox 2. And then people think, oh, but 3 is better than 2. So I get why they did that. Then Xbox One, which people are still scratching their heads over, all part of their, you know, one box to rule them all, ill-fated, yeah, exactly. you know, uh, a, a initial launch, which they, had, which they had to walk back. And now, and, and then Xbox One X, and now Series X, their naming scheme is all over the fucking place, Greg. And I, I, I think it's a mess, frankly. And, and I think that they have a, with PlayStation, again, it's easy. Here's the PlayStation 5. There's one with a disk drive, one without. Anyone can understand that. Xbox Series, okay, so we had the Xbox One. Now, then we called it the One S because we brought out the One X. And now the One X is going away, but now there's a Series X. And the Xbox uh, S is staying around, but now there's going to be a Series S. It's a fucking mess, Greg. Like, do you, I, I mean, like, that's really confusing. And I think hardcore gamers who like watch shows like this and, and click all the blogs every day will be able to make sense of it. But I think a lot of people are going to be really confused. And I don't want, I want Microsoft to succeed. I want Xbox to succeed. I don't want them walking into another Wii, Wii U type situation where everyone was confused about, wait, is this, is this a next generation thing or just an upgrade? Or what? It's really, really messy. Their naming convention is a mess. I think they're hot. They're, so they're going to end up with what? Three tiers of hardware offerings. The Xbox One S, which is the, the bottom of the barrel, that's that's going to be like the, the base skew, yeah. right? And then um, the Series S, which is going to be something kind of in the middle. We don't yet know how that will be positioned hardware wise, presumably at least as powerful as a One X because the One X is going away. And then the Series X, which is the top of the tree. Like, I, I guess I can understand that, but it just it just feels like it's more confusing than it needs to be. I think uh, the uh, Xbox One S is the one that's on borrowed time, and when that falls out of the conversation, and you just have either oh I'm gonna go getting I'm going to get an Xbox, are you getting a Series S or a Series X? That's simpler, right? And it's like oh, man, I'd love to I'd love to play grounded, I'd love to play Halo Infinite, but I don't have that money. Well, do you have a controller and fifteen dollars and internet connection? X Cloud lets you do that via your PC or your phone or your whatever. Yeah, and I think the one thing that they can do to cut through all of this is the, and I think this is where they're going, is the messages, messaging of saying, look, if you pick up a game, like Xbox is all you need to know. Pick up a game on Xbox, and whether you have, uh, where, whether you have the bottom tier system, the middle tier, or yeah. the top tier, it's going to run on it, right? It's just, it's just, yeah. you know, it's like, it's like, and it's more. Like, we say this all the time. Console gaming is more and more like having a PC. You know, when PC developers develop games now, uh, well, forever they've always had to develop to a bunch of different system specs. Um, and now Xbox developers, and I think this is going to be a harder, you know, PlayStation developers, it's going to be easy for them. There's one set of, one set of specs.
Sure. Maybe there'll be a PS5 Pro a few years down the road, but for right now, there's one set of specs. Whether or not there's a disk drive doesn't, yeah, I mean, that might have a marginal uh, development impact, but not a major one. Um, but, you know, the, the Xbox developers are now uh, going to have to develop for three uh, different systems. So like, and you think about the, the, the power difference between the 1S, which is not terribly powerful now, and the Series X, which is going to be super powerful. That's a big spectrum of, 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 uh, of hardware. Sure. But here's my um, thing about that. They've only committed to that for the first couple of years. And and also, you mentioned it earlier, haven't PC developers had to do that forever in terms of sliders and like what you want your graphics quality to be, what you want this yeah. to be? Like yeah. I feel, I, I'm ignorant about game development for as much as I talk about games and play games. Like I understand it's way more complicated than I think it is. But I also think that at least for this couple of years we're talking about, I don't think you're going to usually, I mean, when we talk about the standouts of a a console, right. And what defines a console generation, we inevitably usually end up talking about stuff that comes out at the end of the life cycle, right. What we're seeing right now with, and not even end of it, but like later in the console life cycle. Cause if you're talking about PlayStation, right. The ghost of Tsushima, last of us part two horizon, I think was the first, maybe one where we were like, Oh no, I shouldn't say that I'm painting too liberally there, but I'm talking multiple years in is when that happens. We'd all love if, Halo Infinite had been worked on in secret for four years already with Xbox One, uh, or I'm sorry, Xbox Series X, the only SKU in mind. Bam, you get it. And it's just all these sunny things. But that's not how it typically works. It's the same thing I think when I, I talk about uh, Spider Man Miles Morales, where I expect that on PlayStation 5 to look great, have crazy good loads, really great animations, be buttery smooth. But I also don't expect it to be. Like when I go back and play Spider Man on PlayStation Four, I feel like I'm playing Spider Man on PlayStation Two. Like I don't think it's going to be that kind of jump. No, maybe not. And, the, and it, it remains to be seen. This is we're in very new territory here with this with uh, Microsoft's um, Xbox strategy going into the next mm-hmm. generation. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I like the fact that you know people uh, who have their current gen consoles and aren't ready or able to upgrade to the next one right away, they needn't feel frozen out, right? Because again, this idea that the games are going to continue to support all of them, where I think it might have an impact possibly, um, is at the high end, you know, a lot, there's a a lot of, uh, uh, speculation, uninformed speculation, mostly on the Uh, internet, believe it or not, um, that, you know, the reason why halo infinite doesn't look that great right now is because they can't go all out on series X because they have to develop a game that can be friendly to the lower tier, um, hardware specifications that will continue, uh, that the game needs to support as well. So, um, you know, that's, that's just one theory why halo infinite didn't look good. I sounds, it feels like there are many out there, but that's, that's certainly, uh, one of them, you know, so Sony for its, um, uh, you know, uh, app, uh, you know, killer app uh, games is going to go all out uh, PS5 hardware, and they don't have to worry about legacy systems. Microsoft does, and again, I'm not a development expert. I don't know much how much that really holds them back. Like you said, on the PC side, developers, you know, do a fine job scaling games for you know hundreds of thousands of different system specifications, not just three. So maybe, maybe it's not a big deal. My my issue is more just like it's it's a complicated offering, and their their marketing department is and their publicity department. Uh, is gonna ha- it has a challenge ahead of them in terms of communicating um, all the you know the, the what the how the Xbox platform uh, is is going to work going forward how the ecosystem is going to work with all these different um, uh, you know, at least three different versions of their console which they're going to continue to sell and market alongside each other again for people like you and me we, we we're going to go to the store and know exactly what we're getting for anyone who like, a casual gamers or for anyone who are you know, aren't they're not educated the way that we are, are going to go to Target or Walmart or wherever and see Mm -hmm. an Xbox One S, an Xbox Series S, and an Xbox Series X and go, what the fuck is going on here? Which which one is, which one am I supposed to be getting? And, you know, it's going to be Microsoft's job to to make sure people know the difference. Uh, It's worth pulling in this quote because we are talking about internet rumors and all this stuff. Uh, July 10th, so almost a month ago, but mainly three, two weeks ago, right? And a little bit more. Uh, Joe Scrabbles had this report on IGN. Phil Spencer says Xbox Series X games aren't being held back by Xbox One. Xbox Boss says the idea of cross-gen games being held back is a meme. Uh, Speaking of gamesindustry.biz, the Xbox Boss called the idea of them being held back a meme that gets created by people who are too caught up in device competition. Instead, Spencer points to the current pc market where games that are regularly touted as the most advanced versions across all platforms can also be played on low-powered hardware 
Quote, just look at Windows, Spencer explained. It's almost certain if the developer is building a Windows version of the game, then the most powerful and highest fidelity version is the PC version. You can even see that with some of our first party console games going to PC. Even from our competitors, that the richest version is the PC version. Yet the PC ecosystem is the most diverse when it comes to hardware. Uh, when you think about CPUs and GPUs from years ago that are there. And he continues on that uh, line of reasoning, talking about, yes, every developer is going to find a new line and say, blah, 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 and they go on and on, but is worth pointing out for that conversation again to uh, granted maybe that was you know uh, damage control knowing what was coming uh there uh, whatever but i i again for where you're at i think it's a different story to sit there and go all right let's look at the end of xbox series x life cycle right let's talk seven years from now whatever's happening on the xbox series x as an exclusive from a microsoft game studio to then say well that couldn't run on the xbox well yeah no that's seven years of learning and advancement of video game technology and all this stuff i don't think it's as big of a deal right now yeah and again i i, I feel phil may well be right he makes the same um windows analogy that i did P I, I used to edit pc gamer magazine and we played games on all kinds of different um, system specifications, the recommended uh, and the minimum, to kind of get a sense of uh, you know how how they performed. And you're you're, you're right. I, it's it, I don't think it is terribly difficult. PC game uh, PC developers been doing this for a long time, targeting different system specifications. I, I I generally think you can do your best work and get the most out of a system when you're targeting one lot set of specifications. You know, and it's not a moving target the way it is on on PC. Um, but again, I'm not an expert. I, I, I think this, again, this is less of an issue than the potential marketing challenge and the consumer confusion of having all these different SKUs uh, on the market at once. But again, though, it could be a great benefit to Microsoft by being able to come to the, like, some people just want the cheapest one. And yep. again, if it comes down to look, if PlayStation or Xbox, I said a million times before, they're 90% the same. 90% of the games are the same. They're at least 90% similar in terms of hardware performance. There's not a huge amount that separates them at this point. It's really down to like a handful of personal preferences. And one of those preferences is going to be price. A lot of people, you know, are price limited and they're, you know, the defining factor is going to be, well, which one is the cheapest? Mm -hmm. And if Microsoft can have the cheapest sticker on the shelf at Target uh, this Christmas, they're going to sell a lot of those consoles. Gary, I got a lot more Xbox stuff to do here for you. But before we go on, D-Block comes to my rescue and says, Hey, Greg, the thing you keep referencing about pricing for the Xbox and people saying, oh, well, it's just a little bit more for the better box is usually referred to as the decoy effect and is usually described by referencing movie theater popcorn, where a small costs $3 and a large costs $7. So they add in a medium for six fifty, dollars causing you to say, oh, well, I'll just upgrade to the large for an extra 50 cents. Thank you, D-Block. That's perfect. Lord of Pwn points out, too. The MTV show Blair Herder was on was called G-Hole, not G-Spot. Don't feel bad about it, Greg. A lot of men get them confused all the time, which is a great response. <laughs> Uh, number two on the Roper Report. It turns out Fable has an all-star team behind it of video game developers. This is Andy Robinson over at Video Games Chronicle. Uh, Fable was announced during Xbox Game Showcase last week, finally confirming a year's open secret that Playground is working on the RPG series. And VGC analysis has offered some context on the people behind the reboot. Will Kennedy, a level designer who worked on Grand Theft Auto V and its online component, is the chief designer of Fable. Kennedy is joined by I'm sorry Kennedy is joined on the design team by Juan Fernandez de Simon uh, a lead designer for Ninja Theory's Hellblade and Hunter Wright who was the lead quest designer for the Borderlands games as previously revealed uh, most of the Batman Arkham Knight script writing team are working on the new Fable game uh, senior script writer uh, Kim uh, McCaskill joined the RPG team from Rocksteady in August 2019. Meanwhile, the new team's narrative director is Martin Lancaster, the lead scriptwriter for Batman Arkham Knight. Another Rocksteady senior scriptwriter, Craig Owens, is now principal scriptwriter at Playground. In the art department, a pair of Ubisoft veterans helm, and it goes on like this of going in through all these different people who have worked on Division 2, Ghost Recon, uh, it going, it, it's going into this whole thing that gets me more and more excited for Fable, uh, Gary. Leading into the Xbox showcase, this was one of the ones that I was like, I... Fable is one of the Xbox franchises that I love, that I remember playing in Parker's room and you know college going in there using his Xbox. Like I'm stoked for a new Fable and to see this kind of quality content brought to Playground to make it gets me excited. Absolutely, I I love uh, the Fable games. It was one of my uh, one of my most favorite games on the OG uh, Xbox, and uh, I've always enjoyed that series. I'm really really glad to see it coming back again. If it, one of my uh, things on my wish list for the showcase was I wish they had gone back and brought back more kind of storied 
franchise uh franchise sure. i wanted to see like crimson skies come back and you know perfect dark and uh, yeah, perfect some of the dark. some of the original xbox franchises uh but if i could pick one it would be fable and, and we're getting that so i'm really excited the names you rattle off all have really really impressive credentials so that yeah. is very very encouraging that's a great pedigree the only the only cautionary note i would sound and i don't want to get all british on you greg um well, but hey, hey real quick say fable beta. fable was originally a game that had you know british uh dna yeah. and specific british comedy dna running through it you know created by peter, peter molyneux yep. and lionhead that was a british development team i don't know how many you know, and, and it's always over time has only leaned more and more into that very quintessentially hard to hard to imitate um british humor that kind of python-esque uh humor and uh i don't know how many brits they have on their team or if they're or if they have uh, you know american writers that can that can authentically write that kind of uh you know again very very specific uh inimitable british comedy i don't know but that is key key to the narrative tone and the flavor of fable and i really really hope they're able to pull that off given that this is no longer um a british development team making the game how well where is playground based aren't, uh, they, aren't they british are they British? I mean, look, maybe, maybe that whole speech was just completely wrong. Maybe they are. British. Yeah, no, they, yeah, you're totally wrong. Playground Limited oh. is a British video game developer based in Leamington Spa, England. Let me, oh, whatever the Greg, fuck that means. First of all, you pronounced it correctly. You, hey! I, I, felt like, I felt like you were going to say Leamington Spa, but you know no, what? No. Yes. Okay. Look, I, I take it. Well, I, I assumed. I, was I assumed say, that yeah, they sorry. weren't Brits. I don't know why I assumed that. There, there's a lot there, there, you know, like, look, look there's, 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 as you know, there's like hundreds of years of animosity between our peoples, uh, Greg, and I'm always sure, looking sure. for any opportunity to stir up some shit. I understand. Um, I understand. It, it sounds like I was off base on this one, and I'm happy to issue a correction live on air. If it's a British, if, it, if, it, if it's all British developers and specifically British, right, British narrative writers and designers at the heart of it, then yes, I, I only the have, the, I, I, that only gives me more faith in it. Uh, that's the thing too of you know I, i'm don't want to be a oh, not a, what, what if well how i don't want to make assumptions i don't I'm, i want I, I, what i'm being drawn to say is i don't want to be racist but what would it be if i was a dumb american being dumb about brits what would that be that's not racism right what, do you, what uh, do you um bigoted uh, i'm just i don't want to be bigoted i don't want to i don't want I mean, to make just, assumptions but just, the fact that they have batman just, arkham knight I mean, people means that they're just, bringing sorry what are you gonna say just just american just being american. okay cool i don't want to be american about it but my <laughs> my american brain would say that if you're bringing over batman arkham knight people they're coming from rocksteady uh, rocksteady and rocksteady is also a british game developer so there's probably i i would say i mean there's a whole possibility that these, these people went to work for rocksteady and are not british at all you know what i mean we call them phonies and now they're going over there but i think you got what you yeah want. and this and, and 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 this is the high wire act that i indulge in every time i think i'm being big and clever by coming on here having not done any research or read the show notes and just giving you like you know hot take straight out of the yeah. microwave sometimes i uh you know i go off half cocked and i uh, i do apologize to the good people at, at playground games my fellow countrymen um for assuming that they and, and to microsoft for assuming that they could ever have made such a cat catastrophic de uh, decision as taking such a quintessentially british franchise uh and handing it off to a bunch of uh, traitorous yankee doodles yeah uh, because you know no nobody wants that i'm very very glad that the heart and soul of fable uh will continue to come out of, of britain uh where it was born as it should i'm i like look i i'm i'm really really excited and optimistic about fable i think i said on the x cast last week if if you came to me uh, and said, um, I can wave a magic wand and put any game, any game that was shown at the showcase today, finished on your Xbox Series X right now, and you could play it today. What would you pick? Fable, and it's not even yeah. close. Okay. I'm glad you apologized. I'm glad you took your lumps. Listen, when I, when I, unlike a lot of people on the internet, Greg, when I get it wrong, yeah, I'm, I'm the first one to put my hand up. A lot of people are wanting me to make a statement about it, so I'm just going to suspend you for one X cast. So Major Nelson has to fill in for you. You know what? Honestly, good good for X cast. That'll be, that'll be your, that'll be your best show yet. Somebody who actually not so like I bet I bet you Larry knows he the, knows the where playground, playground is. I bet yeah. he, he wouldn't have fucked Dope. up like that. Yeah, you trust me. You you I, I, honestly after Larry comes on this Friday and yeah. in my chair and dazzles Mike and Alana, I'll be amazed. That this I mean I could have done my last show. Yeah. You might not want me back <laughs> after this. Sorry, Number three. Ga sorry, Gary. We replaced Gary with Larry. It's okay. And then he somehow gets animal uh, talking for me too. Leah replaces him. Anyways, uh, number three. 
Grounded is a Steam bestseller. This is Richard Wakeling over at GameSpot. Grounded has had a strong debut, shooting to the top of Steam's top sellers list after yesterday's launch. The Honey, I Shrunk the Kids-inspired survival game is an experiment of sorts for developer Obsidian Entertainment. The studio is well known for its story-heavy RPGs with the likes of The Outer Worlds, Pillars of Eternity, Fallout New Vegas, and Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2, filling out the expansive catalog. Grounded quickly became the top-selling game on Steam after launching in early access yesterday, despite being freely available as part of Xbox Game Pass on PC as well. Steam DB shows the current, uh, I'm sorry, the concurrent player peak at about eh, 12 and a half thousand players, uh, which puts it near the bottom of Steam's top 100 most played games. However, this doesn't take into account those playing on Xbox Game Pass or via the Windows Store. These numbers jump up in terms of Twitch views, too, with the survival game reaching the top three spots in terms of viewing on the streaming platform. It's a decent start for a game you wouldn't expect from Obsidian. Grounded's concept is a curious mix of between Honey, I Shrunk the Kids and survival games like Rust or The Forest. You play as one of four teenagers in 1990, either solo or with up to three other friends, all of whom are shrunk down to the size of mere millimeters as part of an experiment. From there, you find yourself trapped in a backyard full of hostile insects and creatures. Uh, You'll need to cook food, find water, construct a base, and craft weapons and items to fend off the spiders and other creepy crawlies trying to kill you. Gary, shout out to Grounded. Uh, Did you get to play it all last night? I know it's it's literally one day. No, I've been... um, uh, I had to catch up on uh, Perry Mason last night, which is my uh, favorite show on TV right now. If you're not watching that, you should be watching it. It's really good. I'm not watching Um, But uh, no, I've actually had Grounded installed... Uh, pre-installed ready to go since it first popped up on game pass and uh, my daughter really wants to play it because it looks like a lot of fun you know little kids running around in the backyard and giant insects and stuff could be a lot of fun Uh, she wants to play it with me Uh, i've actually been checking in on it uh, every now and again it's like "Eh, eh, come back it's not ready yet and i didn't realize when it was going to drop it dropped um i guess uh just yesterday it looked i watched i actually watched a little bit of Snowbike mike streaming it last night it looks really fun now that it's unlocked i think we're gonna my daughter and i are gonna go uh, check it out together it looks I played good. it last night. I played it last night. Uh, I beat all the story stuff that's in it for launch or for early access launch. Then uh, Andy signed on and we ran around and played a bit too. I was super impressed and I had a great time with it. I'm excited for more. Like I, I it's probably gonna be, I thought I described it last night after I was tweeting about it and talking to some uh, best friends about it on online or whatever and talking to Andy about it that for me, especially in the absence of E3, it is it was such a good E3 kind of demo where I got in there, got my feel, ran and did the story stuff. Then it was open quest to run around and do other stuff and explore the map. And it it left me wanting more. Like, I'm, I'm like, oh, man, I wish there was more to do in it. I wish there was more, which is a great place to be. Like, I'm not done with it. Like, I want that right. game to be a full game and ready to go. The one thing yeah. I thought was fascinating about it, though, is people keep calling it a survival game, which it is, of course, because there is a food and thirst meter and all that jazz and you can get killed. But it, for me, that queued up in my head oh it's gonna be like don't starve and i'll die and that's the end of it right like i or like you know rust or something like that and the fact that it plays way more to me like and i said this last night of course people just wanted to make their fucking jokes but stick with me that it's honey i shrunk the kids meets fallout 76 in the way that yeah there's crafting and base building and that you have to you know that you have the hunger and stuff but first off the hunger and water stuff wasn't nearly as annoying as i find it in fallout 76 uh I feel like when this is done, it's going to have such a great story because just the little bit they gave of me and the NPCs I got to talk to and interact with and take quests from and find audio logs from like, I was like, oh my God, this world's rich with ideas in the way that I want to run around and explore. And, you know, the first time I died and I respawned with none of the stuff I've been collecting, I'm like, oh God, this fucking sucks. I don't want to do this, but sure as shit, my backpack, it was on the map. I got to run all the way back there, pick it back up, get all my stuff back. Like it is. It's survival, but it's not punishing survival. I think calling it a survival game gives, at least for me, and this is my own probably um, prejudices against survival games, made it sound like it was going to be so full tilt hardcore that it wouldn't be fun. Whereas this one, it, it for right now at least, challenges you and wants you to explore. And then when you find out that, oh man, ladybugs have a lot of hit points, way more than I thought, they can kill me. Once I died and came back, I was like, all right, I know that now. And it was about running and exploring and doing. There's a lot of cool concepts in it. It's really cool. I, I want to play the entire thing. Yeah, I'm hoping that my daughter is going to find it um, accessible because I think there is a big gap in the market, a big opportunity right now in the same way that Minecraft Dungeons kind of took the Diablo oh, game and yeah, made it accessible yeah, yeah. to younger kids by putting it in the Minecraft universe and making it, you know, relatively, you know, there's still a lot to that game, but it's very accessible. My eight-year-old kid like totally gets it and she loves she loves playing it. I, you know, I, I, I'm a fan of, uh, of that genre, like, uh, you know, whether it be Rust, Raft, 
you know, don't starve. Yeah. You know, there's it's a that's a big, big genre, especially on PC. Like a lot of that, that's a, you know, gotta, you know, gotta boil the water to purify. You don't want to get yep. thirsty, brush your teeth, or they'll fall out. Like all these, all these things you've got to manage, you know, to keep yourself alive. A lot of those games, though, they, they seem to be trending towards like how hardcore and how micromanaging and how difficult can we make it? I like the idea. I wish there was one that was like a little less like hardcore than that do you know what i mean i, like, I like the, the idea but like does everything have to be so like do, do i have to really be managing a million different things at once because i find that too stressful if, if grounded is going to occupy that space i think that could be uh really really good sean cassidy writes into patreon.com slash kind of funny games just like you can and says hey kfgd crew it's only been one day but grounded has had some great success so far Early on, it's easy to dismiss slash criticize games like this in Sea of Thieves, especially when fans have been clamoring for Microsoft to create more narrative-focused experiences. Microsoft has been focusing on a more diverse portfolio of games, along with games that work well in Game Pass. Grounded definitely fits that. Is the core gaming audience too quick to dismiss and criticize games like this? Do you see Sony committing to games like this in the near future or sticking with what's worked for them so well? Thanks, Sean Cassidy. Um, I think... Sea of Thieves and Grounded are two different examples. Whereas I think Sea of Thieves was coming from Rare. People were stoked. We had heard good things. And then when people jumped in and had their chance with it, it felt like it was con content bare. There wasn't a lot to do there, all these different things. I think the way that Grounded has been promoted and talked about, and especially Obsidian coming right off of uh, Outer Worlds, right? And being like, right? That's Outer Worlds. Not, yeah, Outer Worlds. Uh, coming off Outer Worlds and giving you the RPG experience you want from it. I think there was so much less, man, Grounded's got to be, the, I've been waiting for an Obsidian game. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Grounded from the beginning was like, hey, we're doing something different and weird and here it is and it's a survival game from us and okay, and you saw it and I think the more we saw it, we're like, all right, that looks interesting and then the fact that it's out and again, for me, and it seems like from the reception I'm seeing online, is a good demo of what this game is going to be. Is a good introduction to what this thing will be as a full time thing. And of course, it's labeled early access or yeah, early access. It's you know, it's Game Pass. So again, did you pay for it technically? Like you did, but you know, most people consider a lot of Game Pass games free. Like I know Sea of Thieves was this too, but I think there's just way less expectations for this. And so I think it's going to be interesting to see the reaction to grounded from people like myself who are jumping in, playing it, and being like, oh my gosh, I actually enjoy this, and I'm excited for the full thing. That's what I take away from it instead of how Sea of Thieves was received. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the fact that Grounded is out there in early access. And I like, you know, that that's something that, you know, those of us on the on the PC side have 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 enjoyed for a yeah. long time, you know. Um, and, and some and some games stay in early access for a really, really long time before they go like fully 1.0. Um, but a lot of early access games are like pretty much right there. You know, they just need those final little tweaks and they keep tweaking it until they finally say, okay, now we're ready to go and we'll we'll call this call this the official release. I I, I think it's great to see that happening more on the again, just another way in which consoles are becoming more keep and more like you. PCs. We're seeing more early access stuff and it gives the developers a great opportunity to get their game out there and see how people are responding to it. They're, you know, there's a the, right now there is a massive, massive flood of data coming into the grounded developers from, you know, they're, they're monitoring every single thing about the way that people are playing that game. They're seeing yeah. the feedback they're they're fine tuning the game. It's going to help them ultimately make a better game. So I'm all for it. Me too. Nanobiologist, your wrongs me. Grounded is labeled as game preview. That's how early access is called on Xbox. Thank you very much. Right. Good call. Uh, I got one here for you. Final Xbox uh, Rock Block One. Number four. And Kevin, there's a please show here if you didn't see it already. Uh, Halo has a Nerf gun coming out that has Halo Infinite DLC attached to it. This is Eddie at GameSpot. Halo's MA40 AR weapon is being turned into a Nerf gun to promote the release of Halo Infinite. And now Microsoft has shared some new images of it and more. The Halo Twitter account announced uh, the Nerf Blaster is now in production and pre-orders are now open. Amazon has posted the product page for the toy, revealing the details about the toy itself and related DLC offer. Uh, the MA40 AR Blaster features a motorized system that allows users to hold down an acceleration button and then squeeze the trigger to fire. Uh, it comes with a 10 dart clip and, and 10 darts, uh, while it also includes a rail riser uh, that can be attached to the weapon to customize it. Intriguingly, the Amazon page also mentions that the $50 Toy Blaster comes with a code to unlock, quote, a digital asset in Halo Infinite. Specif specifics are not available, but a logical jump would be that the code will unlock a digital version of the weapon in Halo Infinite. Gary, you going to buy it? Get no. it for your daughter? Look, no? you, get, you get to a point when a, when a, when a game series uh, becomes such a big deal 
that you start to get into the realm of the you know the the silly you know things that, you know that you can the ways that you can merchandise and monetize it um you know at this point you know there's the whole black you know the whole like black ops cold war thing like how'd that get leaked out through doritos yeah right like call of duty at this point is as much a doritos franchise as it is an activision franchise because you know the, that that you know that marketing partnership has been there for a long time you know eat a bunch of doritos and get free xp and stuff like that um uh i just saw this morning there's a destiny cookbook the fuck is that but i mean you know <laughs> it's not hurting. It's, it's not hurting anyone i guess why not there's money to be made make it you know it's fun it's silly um and you know the hate the, the idea of a halo nerf gun is is in that neighborhood as well there are a bunch of people out there that will want it um you know people that don't yet have kids and still live on their own who are, who are able to put a bunch of plastic shit on their shelves you know knock yourselves out yeah well I hope uh, you know. I think your daughter would like it. Does your daughter like Nerf guns? Yeah, you, you she Nerf likes guns super soakers. She likes water guns. Oh uh, yeah. The pro sense. I won't have Nerf guns in the house because I'm not going to spend the, re the rest of my life picking up fucking foam darts from all over the house. <laughs> Thirty years from now, you're finding them tucked behind a photo you, frame. I, I, you, like you, from your seriously, you joke about it. That's my life. Yeah. You got. She have a lot of toys hidden all over the house. Yeah. Yeah, she does. <laughs> <laughs> number five on the roper report uh private division is making some moves this is rebecca valentine over at gamesindustry.biz today take two has announced that its private division publishing label has inked deals with moon studios league of geeks and roll seven to publish a new title from each outfit moon studios known for both ori and the blind forest and ori and the will of the wisps will be working on a new action rpg through the partnership while armello creators league of geeks focus on a new game and ip and ollie ollie studio roll seven works on a new flow state game all three titles are currently in development and do not have release dates uh with take two expecting the first to launch in fiscal 2022 at the earliest uh private division is take two's indie focused publishing label uh that has recently put out uh, has put its name on titles such as the outer worlds ancestors the humankind odyssey and disintegration it also recently took over development of Kerbal Space Program 2 from Star Theory, moving the project to a newly established internal studio called Intercept Games. Uh, again, that's I know it's a mumbo jumbo we won, but an interesting one for I know how much people love Ori. So Moon Studio is getting a game that's Private Division's funding is great. Again, this is why I think Private Division is making a lot of cool moves outside of this, obviously being behind Outer Worlds. Uh, interesting to see them expand their roster of games. Yeah. And yeah, do you, do you have anything to add? I, I, I don't that? have that's much of the, on that one. That's a boring ass one. Yeah. I got that's a boring. It's not boring. It's just not like that's not like conversation starter. And the same for this one. Number six, Drinkbox is teasing their new game. Kevin, I gave you another tweet to show, but if you can't do it in time, don't worry. They tweeted a pair of eyes blinking in a GIF form, and they then they followed up and said, "You guessed it. We're working on something brand new. We're excited to share more when we can." Then the eye emoji, of course, Drinkbox, the people behind Guacamelee, Severed, uh, Mutant Blobs Attack, uh, gr uh, friends of the show, obviously, but also just great video game developers up in canada excited to see whatever that's going to be but i don't know i just, what want, to, I just want to say greg thank you for saying gif it's good to know you're on the right side of history this, i hate this gif stuff and they're like well the guy who invented it said it's called gif i don't give a shit what he said he didn't know what he's talking about he's a dumb dumb all right get agree. out of here yeah I don't even want to hear it. I'm angry you even brought it up. Before we get to the list, let me tell you about our sponsor. <laughs> it's Brooklinen, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you've probably heard us talk about Brooklinen before. Uh, they're home to the world's favorite sheets, but their towels, they're also amazing, and you don't have to look anywhere for a recommendation because I, Greg Miller, just dried my body with a Brooklinen towel today. It's soft. It came quick on the internet. It was easy to pick, and I just enjoy the hell out of them. Uh, they give your daily routines a little something extra. And with varying levels of plushness, uh, the towel of your dreams is waiting to wrap you up. And with this extra time at home, it might be nice to invest in a little extra softness and absorbency. Uh, if you've been looking for ways to turn your bathroom into a miniature spa, Brooklinen's towels can help you find your zen. Brooklinen is the perfect place for, to find all the comforts of home, including ultra soft towels. They're so confident in their product that they make everything, everything they make, I should say, comes with a lifetime warranty. Use the promo code GAMES for 10% off your first order of brooklinen.com. Uh, that's brooklinen, B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com. Promo code GAMES. Brooklinen, everything you need for your most comfortable life. Because, again, I sleep, I sleep on the sheets. I have the towels. I'm a Brooklinen man. Gary, Great. I'm excited to see you break down and buy the Halo Infinite Nerf gun. But that is so far away. If I wanted something more immediate, say, what came to the mom and grab shops? Where would I go? The official list of upcoming software on each and every platform as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily show hosts each and every weekday. Yeah. How about that? I'm now fully off book.
Love it. I got I no it. notes, nothing in front Not of me. Not only do it's I all, love it's all up here. I love the off book thing, but then I would say 15 minutes ago, you moved to this like king's pose you like in your this? chair. You I love like it. This? this is laid back widow. This is what Are I you like in this. I love yeah. it. It's I'm like a rela- it. I, you know, sort of reflecting the relaxed nature of our conversation, Greg. Exactly. Uh, Lost Wing is on Xbox One. Blight Bound is on PC. The 112th Seed is on Xbox One. Dual Gear is on PC. Nicole is on Xbox One. They Breathe is on Switch. Cross the Moon is on PC and Mac. House on the Hill is on PC. An Interesting Journey of Monsieur is on PC. Cardiclism is on PC. The Outcast Lovers is on PC and Mac new dates for you uh metamorphosis is coming uh on august 12th to pc uh ps4 switch and xbox one let's kevin this is for you are you ready let's sing queen let's sing queen it's like let's sing oh. the band queen it's a queen video game but will be Ray, available I, to- I don't like singing too bad digital i'll come over and sing for you on october right. 2nd uh playstation 4 xbox one uh and of course the nintendo switch and then adam bankers at ign had this little had a longer report than i was taking the opening paragraph from Sekiro shadows die twice will be getting a new update on october 29th 2020 uh, that will add a boss rush new outfits and a remnants system that will allow players to send messages to help others on their journey 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 you're um, by the way greg i just want to yeah. say I yeah. hadn't noticed it until you pointed it out, but I'm now looking at because I can see myself in the little preview window here. Yeah. And you're right. I've adopted this pose, and it's a, a very good analogy. I, I do kind of look like a, a bored medieval king sure. sitting on his throne, listening yeah. to like a court jester who's not very good no. and, and kind of wondering if like it would be more <laughs> amusing if I just had him executed. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, I know that. I know that. Yeah, that's a. Uh... I'm every, not saying every, you're, every I'm not story saying you're I give you, you're like, like this. I give you the story, and you're like, yeah. like no, nah, it's down. Get out of here. We don't oh, care about oh, private Which way is going to go? Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for you to squad up. This is where one of you writes in to patreon.com slash games, giving us your name, username, platform of choice, and why you need help in a video game. We read it here. The best friends come and find you, and everybody plays games together. Today, Brian needs help on the Xbox One. His username is Ever Aider. Eve Raider. Ever Aider, uh, E V E R A T E R, all one word. Hi, everyone. I'm looking to do a full run through of Halo 5 on Heroic to complete the co op achievements. I'm available this Saturday and Sunday, all day Toronto time. Thanks. Love from Canada, Brian. If you love Canada, or even if you don't, but you want to love Halo 5 on Heroic with them, hit them up. Ever Aider on Xbox, Xbox, Xbox. Um. We ask people watching live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames to go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. Uh, tell us what we screw up as we screw up, so on and so forth. Um, nanobiologist pops up with one here that I think a couple of people wrote in with questions. Or the one person wrote in with questions about it actually been, it might have been nanobiologist saying that the Sekiro press release mentions that you can download it on Google Stadia. I don't I mean, Google Stadia, of course, their whole shtick is you can't you don't need to download anything. You can stream everything. I think it's a typo. Uh, I would wait for Google to say something about that before I would like take that to the bank and be like, they're adding a downloading feature. Not to mention, I don't think that would save Stadia in any way, shape, or form. Download but, it onto what though? Your your computer. I I know, but like that wouldn't work for any like if you're just using no, like no, a um no. like a Chromecast or whatever, then that wouldn't work. So I don't even know that that's supposed to be like someone just didn't know what language to I think, use. Like, I mean, exactly. <laughs> someone wrote that press release. Fifteen people read it, and they're all like, "I have no fucking idea what Stadia is." So yeah, sure, you can download it. I don't give a crap. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. We have a post show to do. Remember, this is kind of funny games daily. Uh, each and every weekday, we come to you with the nerdy news you need to know about in the world of video games. If you like that, be part of the show, patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Questions, comments, concern, get the show ad free. Get it with the post show we're about to do. Uh, next week, or I'm sorry, this week's hosts are for the rest of it. Tomorrow, it's Blessing and special guest, Zombie Kills. And then Friday, it's me and special guest, Major Nelson. So we have quite the week for you. Uh, remember, everything else going on. Uh, you can catch Gary Witta, Animal Talking. You have another one coming up, right? Tonight, 7 o'clock p.m., um, twitch.tv slash Gary Witter uh, will be going live. Episodes are available after that at youtube.com slash G Witter. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that bell and whatever other shit that streamers are supposed to say. Um, <laughs> tonight, Rick and Morty creator Justin Roiland, Ooh. New York Times bestselling author Susan Orlean, and Canadian indie rockers The Elwins will be performing live first time we've ever had a four-piece band live on stage performing inside animal crossing i don't know what's going to happen but we'll see seven o'clock tonight check it out everybody uh we got a post show to do on patreon.com slash kind of funny games but until next time it's been our pleasure to serve you